Hello, I'm Rachel from Dwenza Garden in Ireland and you're very welcome to this video all about putting the greenhouse to bed for the winter. Now, I have had this wonderful glass house for 15 years, more than 15 years, and there's a whole ritual that goes with putting it to bed for the winter because I grow a lot of subtropical plants in here and I need to protect them against the cold. If you're new to the channel, you should know that I garden in what roughly equates to as hardiness zone nine. So that means that we do get some frost and already this year we've had three very cold nights, one of which included a bit of grass frost. So it really is time to get on with the job. Okay, so if you have a greenhouse too, or perhaps some plants that you're a bit worried about, not sure if they're going to make it through the winter outdoors in your climate, then stay tuned because we're going to go through the whole thing. It's the middle of October now and I can already feel the nip in the air. We've had our first ground frost and it really is time to consider how plants here in my greenhouse are going to get through the winter. I always feel so reluctant to put them to bed because as you can see I have a lot of beautiful things in flower at the moment. I keep a lot of nerines in pots and these are in beautiful flower. Now some nerines could survive perfectly well outdoors here in Ireland but the ones that keep in the pots are kind of uh, fancier varieties and I do have gingers in my greenhouse border which are in full flower so I'm always very reluctant to do the putting to bed business because it means not being able to appreciate those flowers fully. So let's just go through the whole process and as you can see I have a glass house and a greenhouse. Now the glass house houses my permanent collection of mostly subtropical plants. It includes a lot of cacti, a lot of succulents, a lot of South African bulbs and various other bits and pieces. And generally speaking with this kind of plant they require a certain winter minimum a five degree centigrade minimum. And if you're across the pond, that's 41 Fahrenheit. That cannot be maintained just using the greenhouse. I do have to put heat in here, here in order to ensure that it, the temperatures don't get too low. So now we enter into the whole process of insulating the greenhouse and putting the heater in and then just watching the temperatures and making sure that the heater comes on whenever the temperatures are due to drop low. So the first thing I had to do was to cut back the border that I have next to my greenhouse. I have a border just to the north of the greenhouse and the reason for this is that I wanted the greenhouse to be an integral part of the garden, the engine room if you like, and something beautiful in its own right. So that's why it was integrated with soft planting that kind of obscures the rough edges or the hard edges of the greenhouse in the summer. However, that exuberant planting becomes a bit of a pain when you get into winter because part of the process I'm going to carry out today and in the next few days is not just to stick a heater in here. What I'm going to have to do is to take all my plants out. I'm going to have to clean the glass I'm going to have to bubble wrap the greenhouse and then I'm going to have to put the plants back in, just making sure that all pests and diseases are as well, uh, uh, that I'm on top of them as much as possibly I can be. So in order to clean the greenhouse, for example, clean the outside of the glass, I need to get rid of the planting that's right up against the edge of it. And another re reason why I was reluctant to start this process because I had to cut back plants that were doing quite well and still looking quite good. Now if you saw my recent video on planting alliums you'll recognize this border because a number of very tall alliums went in here but also a number of perennials got cut back so I can now get to the glass. And over the other side of the glass house as well, I've cut back my day lilies. So it's just very easy for me to wash the glass on this side too. 
I also had to cut back my tall plants in the greenhouse border, the subtropical ones, just to leave enough space to get the bubble wrap behind them. The next step in this process is to identify which plants will not tolerate a five degree centigrade minimum in winter. So I mentioned I have mostly subtropicals here, but there are a few plants dotted in that need more tropical temperatures. They need like a 10 degree or 50 Fahrenheit during the winter. And those plants will need to come indoors to the house. I also grow a lot of codex plants and plants that wake up in winter so they're summer dormant and they come alive in winter and these ones you really need to keep an eye on because as they're waking up in winter they do want a little bit warmer than my my religious five degrees so these I usually bring into the house as well especially if they're very precious. Okay so today's the day I start in earnest and move all of these plants out of the greenhouse and you will have observed that I do have a second greenhouse one that I won't heat during the winter and that is going to be a great place to put a lot of these plants in the meantime until I get the glass house sorted and the reason why I'll put them in there even though the temperatures aren't going to be high enough is that they will stay dry if I take plants out of the glass house and put them on the lawn and we get rain well that's not really very good for cacti or succulents at this time of year where they're going to encounter low temperatures in a very short period of time so generally speaking you can get away with lower temperatures if your plants are kept really dry and to make sure that I do that a lot of these plants are going to go in the greenhouse I admit I'm very lucky to have a greenhouse to store these plants in and to just work in generally. And I want to give a big thank you to organicgarden.ie, wonderful Irish suppliers of polycarbonate greenhouses. And if you're interested in getting one yourself, then do check down in the description below where there's a discount code and you too could be availing of this wonderful facility. And today I'm lucky enough to have someone help me with this big job of bringing all the plants out. So I want to introduce you. Hi everyone, I'm Luis. I'm 26. I'm, as you can hear, I'm French. And I've been learning with Rachel for almost one week. Okay, all right. Well, you're very capable and very qualified to help me take the plants out. Yeah. <laughs> so shall we start with the big one? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, yay. Now some of the bigger plants that I don't mind if they get a bit wet I'm going to just leave here on the lawn because they're very heavy to cart in and out of the greenhouse. Step four is to completely clean the glass house, but it's very important before you start this to disconnect the hose from the gutter that goes into the water, but you don't want soapy water cascading into your rainwater and poisoning your plants. Step four is to give the glass house a thorough clean. That involves making sure that all of the glass and all of the metal and all of the flooring is 100% clean. And the reason for that is that we want maximum light in here in winter. Now you have to remember very shortly, I'm going to put a whole load of bubble wrap up, which will reduce light. So we need to get the maximum we can from the transparent glass. Also, when you clean, you get rid of any pests or diseases or bugs that might be lurking in corners. The first thing I do is to swab all of the glass with a soft brush dipped in soapy water. 
I need a stepladder to get up to the roof. I try to clean my glass house twice a year, once in autumn, just before the bubble wrap goes up, and the second time in spring, when the bubble wrap comes down. But I have to be honest with you, I don't always get to do it twice a year because sometimes the weather is just too awful and I just don't have the energy. But if I can do it once a year, I feel happy. But this very often isn't enough and there will be stains in the glass that you only see after you rinse the soapy water off. So you need to go again, this time with a scouring pad. It's important too to take a stick and clear out any mosses or build up of dirt that lodge between the metal and the glass. It's a bit of a painstaking task, but worthwhile. Once the whole glass house is clean, I rinse it off using a hose. And of course, the staging on which the plants will sit does need a bit of a scrub. If any of you are interested in bubble wrapping your greenhouse, I did make a separate video about that, which I will link to at the very end of this one and put it down in the video description as well. Oh, I hope I remember to do that. But in any case, it's a really worthwhile job to do because you, by just insulating your greenhouse, you can raise the temperature by anywhere between two to four degrees in winter. And that's just from trapping the day heat in the greenhouse and if you put a heater in there not letting the heat that you put in escape so it's a bit of a fiddly job you need bubble wrap and the bubble wrap i'm using is just regular packaging bubble wrap it goes up in the autumn it comes down in the spring and in between it lives in rolls in my attic the pegs I'm using are purpose bubble wrap pegs for, uh, well, for greenhouse use. And I have two sorts here today. The old ones are working well, although some of them are beginning to break now because they don't last forever. You can reuse them, but I don't know, maybe three, four years would be their lifespan. And I have bought some new ones this year, but unfortunately they really aren't up to task So the idea with the bubble wrapping is to make sure there are as few gaps as possible. And you'll notice the very first strip of bubble wrap that I put up had holes in it. And that's because one winter the cat got accidentally locked in the greenhouse and she clawed at the bubble wrap and made holes in it. So my solution to that was to reuse the bubble wrap with the holes in, but to put a second strip over the holy strip. So I actually have a, a double thickness at the very bottom of the greenhouse. So do try not to lock any unsuspecting animal in your greenhouse because they always do damage. Hello and welcome to day three of winter proofing the greenhouse and well Louis has his day off today so it's just me to bring all of the plants from the other greenhouse back here into the newly bubble wrapped glass house where they have plenty of insulation and will soon have a little bit of heat for winter and I'm just going to before I start bringing the smaller plants back just going to start setting up my shelving because you may have noticed in various videos I have some makeshift or self-made uh, shelving which is wooden planks balanced on pots. So the pots have just been washed out. You have to be very careful with this because obviously being a glass house, it is made of glass. And when you're carrying long, thin things like pieces of wood, it's easy to lose sight of where the end is. And I certainly don't want the end poking through um, the glass and breaking it. 
and here we go this trog just shows debris that I've cut from my plants so dead leaves that kind of thing whoops and of course as always a few plants have bitten the dust over the co course of the season there are always a few plants that die every time I move in or out but as long as it's nothing too precious or not too many then I'm not worried about it so as you can see bubble wrap is up even the door has been bubble wrapped which is just behind you there on the door the bubble wrap needs to be actually taped to it because there is no place to put the clips in I'm very pleased to see a few things waking up just as I put them in place. My Masonias, for example, I've got two of them peeping up and I can't wait to see those little babies in bloom. I think I might take them into the house. And there are a few more plants here, by the way, that I will probably bring into the house. Things that are expected to flower in winter or I might deem to be a little bit vulnerable, I will take them inside either to enjoy them or just to protect them. And uh, lots of uh, amarines and nerines in flower. I'm very pleased to see that. And here on the shelf, I have a whole row of basically South African bulbs that are waking up for whatever reason. So there's um, Veltimia capensis, various babies of Hymanthus. And I will just need to keep an eye on those and make sure they get some water. It's always a bit of an issue feeding things in winter because the temperatures are so cold that, you know, like fertilizer can't readily be absorbed by plants. But um, yeah, so I mean, Hymanthus cocinius, for example, which many of these plants are, they're seedlings of Hymanthus cocinius that I grew from seed. I will probably uh, bring a couple of those in the house just as a safeguard. So I guess that's about it to show you. Oh yes, uh, my alocasia over there is going to flower. So it's sent up a flower spike. And um, well, I've read conflicting reports about what will happen next. Some people claim that the plant dies after flowering, but I think if the plant is already healthy, that's not necessarily going to happen. In any case, I'm not prepared to cut off this plant's one chance at happiness in producing a flower and my one chance to actually see it. I will let it bloom and we will see what happens from there. And I guess that really brings me to the end of this video about winter proofing the greenhouse. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. And I do hope you can hear me over the big storm that's whipping up outside. The only thing left to do now is to keep an eye on watering because many of these plants will need a little bit of water as, um, as they go through the winter. Some will be completely dormant, but others will need a little bit of water. And also to keep an eye on the temperatures, that's the main thing. So if they're due to drop, below uh, 5 degrees centigrade, 41 Fahrenheit, then the heater will be switched on. I hope you're winter ready. And um, yeah, and that's all. Thank you for joining me on this video and I will see you on the next one. Bye.